A couple weeks ago, I got a call from a landowner. They needed a boundary line staked and a land description prepared. So one of the things we always try and do here when somebody calls is ask some questions. And a lot of surveyors don't do a good job of that. So I was talking to this lady. I said, all right, where's your parcel? Why do you need the line staked? You know, why do you need a land description? So she told me that uh, another local company uh, had surveyed uh, her property about four years before and found that there was a, a fence that was allegedly 30 feet off the property line. So her neighbor's fence was allegedly 30 feet into her parcel. And uh, they had been working over the last four years to get to a settlement agreement with the neighbor and the settlement had finally been reached. And so uh, there was some, you know, some paperwork that needed to get taken care of to, to wrap up the settlement agreement. So they needed to stake the, the actual correct location of the of property boundary, allegedly correct location, and then have a land description prepared. They were going to swap some land. So I asked her, I said, hey, can you send me over the survey from, from four years ago? That was 2018. I said, I'd like to take a look at it. So she sends me the survey. I took a look at it. It looked to me like the, the other survey company here locally did a pretty good job. I thought I, that doesn't always happen, but this time it looked like a pretty good survey. So... Um, I called the called the gal back and I said, hey, I think these guys did a pretty good job in 2018. And um, if you hire me, I'm going to have to go and, and redo some of this work to verify that, that they did a good job, even though you know, it looks like they did a good job, but I have to make sure. Um, I said, it'd be less expensive if you just hire the, the, the survey company that did the survey for you in 2018. I said, I know, I know who they are. They're still around. Give them a call and see if they can finish this up for you. It's going to be less expensive. And it's not because I didn't want the work. Right, but I felt like that was the best thing for the client to do. So she told me, she says, well, you know, I've been trying to get a hold of that survey company for the last few months. They won't return my calls or emails, and I really need to get this finished. We're trying to get it finished up by the end of the year, um, you know. And I, she said, I don't, you know, I've only got a couple months left in in the year, and I, I want to try and get this done. I can't wait for them anymore. Please help me. So, how does that happen? Uh, what went wrong here? And what does it teach us? Like, why is this lady in a situation where the survey company she hired four years ago to do a boundary survey is not returning her phone calls, right? Um, now, there is a slim possibility that she left the bill unpaid. Uh, that's not the impression I got. <laughs> uh, that's not the impression I got from talking to her. Uh, so we can't rule that out. But so I'll tell you why I think this happened. Um, and I've seen it. I've seen it happen multiple times. So what happens is things the, the the things get a little bit slow. A company gets a little bit slow, and they there's not enough of their typical work from their typical client. And so they 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 do what we call moving down market. So they go and take a job that they wouldn't normally take to just kind of pay the bills, right? And so this particular uh, competitor of mine uh, is a civil engineering and serving company, and they, I know they do a lot of public works projects. And this was a this was a small survey for a for a small rural lot. Uh, it's probably not what they normally do, but for whatever reason, they were a little slow four years ago, and they went ahead and took this call and, and went out and did this survey. So they moved down market. But here's the problem: uh, when when companies do that, they move down market, and they they find a, a, something unexpected. So in this case, they found what they thought was a 30 foot fo fence encroachment, and they don't want the hassle. Of helping the client really figure it out it's not their typical client there's not enough money in it for them right typically when you move down market you're taking a lower profit margin right so they're already not making enough money and so what they did is they just got they finished the survey they got the bill paid and they basically told this lady don't ever call us back <laughs> right in essence so they they discovered a problem and then they left it right they let they left this potential encroachment um, and they left the the landowner without a, a way to, to solve it um, and I really, I see surveyors do that all the time and it's a horrible thing. It's a black mark on our profession, right? So what went wrong? Um, you know, the surveyor, one thing I really, I really didn't like in this situation other than being non-responsive to the client is they went and set monuments and filed a map with a major longstanding encroachment. I always tell surveyors, don't do that. You're not helping anybody. You need to get the encroachment fixed before you file your map. And they didn't do this. Uh, this company went and set monuments and filed the map. They did that because they wanted to get paid. And all they did is... Uh, create more problems in that situation, right? Now I've got a, a, a map and monuments on the ground that don't match the fence that's been there for 100 years. I'm not saying the fence was in the right spot, but you want to get that resolved before you set monuments and file a map. The, the surveyor didn't talk to their client about, all right, we've got this problem now with this fence encroachment. Here's some ways you can fix that. 
it was obvious. And then the surveyor just stopped communicating with their client, right? Didn't want to talk to their client, didn't want to pick up the phone. So really unprofessional thing to do, I see it happen. So what, what do we learn? Uh, well, if you're a client, hire a good land surveyor, reputable land surveyor, um, ask them what they're gonna do if they find something they don't expect. Um, you know, hire a good local company, um, demand that they see the project through to, the, to, the com to completion, right? Um, you know, and don't, and don't select your surveyor on low bid. You select your surveyor in low bid, this is what you're gonna get. You're gonna get surveyors that operate like this and then get, get paid and stop answering your phone calls, right? And then for surveyors, you know, if you're gonna move, it's okay to move down market. I'm not gonna say that I've never moved down market, but you, know, you gotta deal with the consequences of that. You move down market and, and start doing work for, um, you know, homeowners, um, you gotta be prepared for what comes with that, right? And some extra handholding and um, it's extra, extra client service and you have to explain things and you're not gonna make as much money, not gonna make as much profit. And that, all of that is okay, but know that if you're gonna move down market. Um, you can't be a professional, move down market, and then give your, client, give your clients crappy service because you're not getting a 30% profit margin, right? That's not the professional thing to do. So either don't move down market or move down market when you're slow but take good care of those clients and understand that, that that's part of what you're going to need to do.